Hello everybody and welcome once again to All of Fabric 3. So today we are going to carry on with modern industrialization and as you can see I've got a lot of recipes prepared in front of me. So let's get started. So there's quite a lot of machines here today and I've probably not got enough time to do all of them. Let's start with this one. The automatic trash can. Handy. It's going to, not only can it get rid of items as you normally would expect, but it can also get rid of fluids and gases. So it's ideal for using um, the fluid processing in modern industrialization. We'll have a look at that in a second because I've already set that up upstairs, as it were. Uh, we're also going to have a look at this, the air intake, the uses of the air intake. There are two. One of them, they both confused me as it happened because I couldn't understand this at all. But here we have a pressurizer, and I have got the recipe for the, that prepared if we have a look at the recipe. It's fairly advanced because we've got these advanced pumps, titanium machine pipe casings, advanced pumps and digital circuits and turbo machine holes. So it's one of the top tier machines at the moment we can build. And this is for producing high pressure steam. Now, I'm actually not ready to do that today, I don't think, because we should also look at titanium because titanium is... One of those difficult things in here, but I've got it all prepared, as you may notice in here. I've got the pump prepared, and I've got the casings which are required prepared because we need ten casings. And I've also got these oops, missed these pipe casings. I'm not sure I want to do it just quite yet. Anyway, <laughs> let's also have a look at this. This is a high steam. High voltage steam turbines so that'll allow it to make steam turbines. This is stainless steel rotors, same rotors as, as always. The advanced rotors, which we have made last time, but just as a recap, so we're using stainless steel rods and, and magnetic stainless steel. And this was a hard one because we needed something that we could only get by using from the quarry using pipes. And then aluminium cables, no big deal. And a annealed copper wire we also went through last time. So we'll take one of these. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use it today, but we'll see. If we actually have a look in the manual about this, uh, let's have a look at high pressure in the manual, because I've got that set up actually. Oops, I'm clicking it off the table. I've actually got high pressure upgrades here and high pressure. So it does tell you about the different things about to do with high pressure. So we've got the high pressure is a new multi-block made of titanium that can turn water into high pressure water, steam into high pressure steam, and, and the other way around. Also, you can have access to high, once you have access to high pressure water, you can use the high pressure steam boiler to produce high pressure steam. So one millibucket of high pressure steam is worth eight millibuckets of regular steam. That is eight EU. And then it carries on a bit more. So we've got the large steam turbine. For that, we need, f I think it's four of these plus a machine, turbo machine hole. So we need four of these high, high voltage steam turbines. But it does tell you here somewhere, it doesn't give you back hot water. So the high pressure stuff doesn't give you back this from the large steam turbine. Well, if we, but you know, therefore you need this heat exchanger, which I've also prepared, but we we'll, haven't really got experimented with that yet. And then the last one of these was the high pressure, high voltage steam turbine, the one we just built. So this is a, an option for small setups. Well, I've got a small setup, one player small setup. So it's like the high voltage generators that produce 512 EU per tick. Um, and this one will only accept regular steam. So I don't need to put in high pressure steam yet. So that's that thing. The other thing I'd like to look at is upgrades because I've got this already prepared as well, this page tagged. So we've got these overclocking upgrades. So the electric machines have an overclock capped at 32 EU per tick. And the electric multiblocks have an overclock have an overclock capped at 128 EU per tick. So right click the machine with a multi-block or multi-block with one of the some of the upgrades will increase its maximum overclocking. Check the R, REI for the exact amount. Okay, so we need a crowbar. So you can right shift a, a machine with a crowbar and that will basically shift right click it will drop the existing upgrades and right and right clicking it will remove the hole. Okay, so you can add a hole to these as well. But I think, yes, 
bit the wrong way around really because this is you can right click a machine with an advanced tool to change its tier to multi um, to medium voltage you can also accept medium voltage cables right click with the crowbar to remove it so you don't have to shift right click you just right click it okay i've actually got that prepared and i'd like to do that first i think they're in here so i've got some different things i've got another diesel generator i've got um advanced machine hole electron cables and some advanced item and an mb input package. these are really needed for these blocks down here but let's have a look at this i also made the um uh the crowbar i think let's see here indeed it is this crowbar is fairly straightforward so all you do for the to get this one over here for example here i've got um this but the centrifuge now the centrifuge is a very slow machine so if i shift right click that it'll show me i've got eight upgrades in here so we can then put those upgrades back into it by simply right clicking them on the front like that and they get absorbed so now when you look at this it says its max overclock is 48 eu per tick now these turbines can only produce 32 eu per tick so we need a better sorry this one here so this is a, high, a medium voltage or an ad, advanced tape tab so i can upgrade this machine now let's do that um i've got an advanced hole somewhere yeah an advanced machine hole i've got four of them i only want one and we can right click that onto this and when you do that it will then change its shape a bit and you'll see it behaves differently and this low voltage tin cable would get dropped off like that you see it's got removed but now we can then attach it onto here let's come around this side of it get the wrench in my hand a bit awkward it happens. everything's in the way <laughs> there we can just reach that bottom right corner there and then we can connect this in so now this machine is actually has been upgraded it doesn't actually upgrade the overclocking so i can't put into this advanced upgrades but at least i don't think i can because that only applies to to the multi-block ones I think I've actually prepared those. Yes, I've got four here running. So you can't go along here and put these into this. It just doesn't work. Let's just try it. Let's just prove it. So you normally just right click them on there and it doesn't work. Because you oops, did I get the right one? Yes, no, I didn't. And you can't put them on yours. As you can see, it just opens up the interface. Whereas with the other upgrades, it actually put them into this. But this one will work on multi blocks. Um, so, for example, we can upgrade the electric blast furnace like that. No problem whatsoever. And then you'll see that this machine has now got energy 96. It tells you it's got some fluids in there and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't actually show me the volt. I think we'd only see that when it's running. So we can't see that for the time being. It's actually night time. I'll have a quick sleep and be back in a second. So the next thing I'd like to look at is how to get oxygen into here. Now, what I, I do have the way of doing this. So, for example, this is an output hatch. This is an input hatch like that. And what we can do is we can make liquid air by putting this bronze item hatch into here. And you'll see it's turned on. It doesn't tell you what it's doing. Oh, it's a shame about that. It would be handy to have it as interface. But I've already programmed it up. And here we've got coming out of here liquid air. So we've now got four buckets of liquid air in here like this. But uh, I've got a slight problem. Go back in a second. They're not much of a problem these days, but there's another one up here, isn't it? Is that a lot? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a lot. Let's just put put the mini map on. It looks like that. Yeah, they bought, that was the last one of those. I moved the cats out here as well, so I didn't have to listen to them. So now we've got basically eight, just about eight buckets. In fact, it should come up to eight buckets, I think. Right, there we go. So we can now take these buckets out of here. Let's just sort my inventory out. And what we can do with these, made nine buckets while I was making the last one while I was doing that. So we can then process, process these in a centrifuge. So let's go up to the top here where I've got the stuff prepared to do this, or nearly prepared. 
I'd be making some faults, running some pipes through the holes, as you can see, like this. So here I would like to put a centrifuge. And what I was planning to do here was put the high pressure, uh, the pressurizer. So for example, I have got with me somewhere, I think I've got a centrifuge here somewhere. Yes, I'm prepared already. So I need to put this down. Let's just break this block in front of it. And then we can put it on this pipe easily enough. Oh, and again, sorry. Right. <laughs> Slight distraction. So let's just get this connected up like that. And so this is now connected in into this into it here. So what we just need to do is now put some fluid into this. And it should start to work. I put in eight buckets. As you can see it's it's taking the buckets and it's now we've got some argon or it's processing some argon. Not quite sure what happened there. I put to the other oh five buckets worth. Oh yes, it only does this is three. I think it's three buckets each time it does this. So this will produce small quantities of these items at the moment. I think argon is something like thirty. Yes, it is. So we need three buckets of liquid air per per round, as it were. And you can see nitrogen is quite high. If you look at the uses of the liquid air before this bit. So three buckets of that will produce 30 millibuckets of argon, 630 millibuckets of oxygen, and 2,340 millibuckets of nitrogen. The use of nitrogen it has an important use. It's used with toluene, sand and flint, and it makes industrial TNT. The industrial TNT in the mixer is used for making other items. So for example, here we can make blast-proof alloy plates um, here we can use beryllium ingots, but the beryllium ingots, the uses of that at the moment don't do anything. We can't, we can't do anything with these at the moment, except for make nuggets. Um, that's all to do with uh, nuclear power. And we haven't got to new nuclear power, and the use of blast, blast-proof alloy makes large blast-proof alloy sheets, which in turn makes the implosion compressor. So. <laughs> Um, okay, how does that look? Let me just check that recipe. You have to make these with the implosion compressor. There must be another recipe for these, thinking about it. Oh, yes, and the compressor. So, two okay, so it's two twice as many makes one plate. So, that's um, this one one makes three plates. So, it's obviously a thing to do in order to make these, but the only use of these is in the complete implosion compressor. And so that's really for making diamonds and emeralds, which isn't particularly useful. We can also make nuclear mixed plates, we produce nuclear alloy plates, have no uses for that. Tungsten ingots, and maybe that's the one that's useful. We can also make an enchanted golden apple, which the only way you can get that is print is by finding one. So that's possibly handy. And the recipe for tungsten in fact, it's the only recipe we can make in with modern industrialization and the uses of it. For modern industrialization, at the moment there is, I think, nothing. Blocks, tungsten granules, this is tech reborn stuff. So there's no uses for this at the moment. So there's not much point in making the implosion compressor. Of course, these ones here, mixed alloy, also these are all tech reborn stuff. We can make a seed, which isn't too expensive. And dust, tungsten dust. I, I don't think there's any uses at all. Let's have a look at the use of the plates. And again, this is all in the industrial revolution. And this one is industrial revolution. It's modern industrialization is the only one that makes these plates. And that's it, basically, yes. I don't think there's much use for that at the moment. So there we have it. So we need to get a lot of argon because we do need argon. The uses of argon. 1250 with silicon will make these monocrystalline silicon stuff. And that we could also put this into the chemical reactor. 
to produce random access memory. And silicon wafers, the recipe for silicon wafers, is how we do this. So we do need a, re oh, that's actually water. So we can, oh no, we need these monocrystalline crystals first of all. Mono crystalline silicon. The recipe for that is the only way to do it. So we need a lot of argon. So what I might do is I might set up the pressurizer because one of the recipes for that is to put it in. And I was going to just put it in across here and feed to that one with power from below. Other than that, we've got we've already got the poly polyvinyl chloride prepared here. Um, actually, I've also got sterile butadiene rubber as well. We've got a nice tank for that, and that has another use as well, which we need for later on. So there's a lot to do just to get up to the next tier of machines, which we are coming towards. Well, I think we have enough time, so let's do this. So let's make the pressurizer like this. As you can see, I've got everything prepared. The turbo machine casings are fairly expensive, as we already know. And then let's take these. We need 10 of these solid titanium machine casings. And we need, from those, we need nine of these titanium machine, pipe machine casings. And they make two at a time. So we have to make 10. Okay, let's go and set this up. I also need some cable. I think I've got some cable with me. Oops. And I also need some input and outputs as it happens. So let's just take these here with me. Notes. In fact, I don't think I've got enough room because I've got a few more drops. I'll be back in a second with some. Get rid of these. You can control shift click those out of there too. So you get them into your hot pump. Yeah. Let's go up here and just, oops, lost my flight. And I have prepared this. I haven't shown you the, the underground maintenance tunnels, but they just basically go down like this. And then from here, we can get to all of the pipes and power cables that we need to. So I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to extend it. So that I should have some, I've got 24 electron cables with me anyway. At the moment, I'm actually a little bit uncertain as to which way I'm going to be doing this. So as you can see, I've got this one up here now, and this is steam, which we don't need to start with. Um, but that, in particular case, is iron, iron pipes, yes. So let's get those out of the backpack. I've got some iron, gold iron pipes. We only need a couple, as it happens, we'll take three. And you can do this trick here, right click it and then right click it again, it connects in. Right, good. So go out of here. It really does look like maintenance tools, doesn't it? And we can come down here and we can then put down here. I want to set up the, the middle bit to be the energy. So what we need, an, uh, what we need is, I haven't shown you the shape of this yet. But what we'll do is we'll put down an MV, where has it gone to? MV energy hat down here like this. I know this because I have tested it. So we have to just connect it in and you'll see why in a second. So this, the particular shape of this machine, um, do I can do that from behind anyway. It's a, it's actually an a odd shape. It's a cross shape. And I think I've got my machine too close to the other one like this. Oh, these are the wrong ones. These are pipe casings to get those. I want the standard casings for doing that. I should really have a sleep because it is night time. In fact, I think I've done this slightly wrong. I'll tell you what, I'll fix it and be back because I need to move it here one block away from this. All right, I'll see you in a second. Okay, it's daytime again. I'm going to put down the, uh, the pressurizer here. I'm not sure that everything, all these machines are at the moment are in the correct place. We can put this down and then we can get the wrench and we can see the shape. As you can see, it is a, it is this cross formation. formation. So everything except for these wants to be in a cross. So let's just put these down. And I'm, I can tell you for, without, without thinking about it, what's going to happen. So some of these are going to be inputs and some of them are going to be outputs. But they'll only be on the bottom and they'll be on the top rows. Let's go up here, do it from here. Oops, shape invalid, of course, because 
So throwing something out of my hand. So we've gone up two rows, that's the nine. So we need the, some more of these solid casings. So that's the shape. So now we need an input hatch. So let's have a look. I should have an input hatch here with me somewhere. Electric motor arms, or just like a, an ordinary bronze or steel input hatch. We don't need advanced ones to start with. Um, you haven't got any. I'll be back in a second. Right, I made one. So let's just have a look and put this in the hand. It'll tell us where we can go. So it can only go in at the top. So I need to feed this down here. So we'll take it off this side here. This is a bronze input hatch. Oh no, we won't do that. We'll put that here. Because that makes the shape invalid. So we put it in like that. It gets a nice colour and you can see here its shape is valid. So that's the input hatch. And in the input hatch, we can put a an air intake. And then you can come along here and you can actually select recipes. So the one we would like to make to start with is this one. We'd like to make liquid oxygen. So we'll click this into place and that'll make liquid oxygen. You can do that for all of the, the items in there. So the other thing we need then is a fluid output hatch. And we've got a steel fluid output hatch. As you can see, this is going on the bottom row. So let's just take this out of here and put this on the, down like that. In fact, I probably should rotate it so the output goes onto this face, but it doesn't need to because we're using pipes. So any of the fluid pipes I've got in my backpack here, I've got iron, I don't want to use those. Let's use the aluminium one, like this. And then it should have power. In fact, it's actually working, as you can see. So if we look at this now, you'll see it's got in here two buckets of liquid air already, and it's processing. Again, oops, it can, it'll go faster over time, like all the electric machines. Oh, it's not going to be as fast as the other one. Um, let's let's outlet this. The only thing that can come out here at the moment is um, liquid oxygen. So now we can, you'll see it's got some liquid air in here. We'll lock it up to make sure that is actually the only thing come out of this hatch. So, for example, if we're doing st high pressure steam, we can use another output hatch, I think. <laughs> I say I think. I have tried it once, but I haven't done too much with it. Um, so let's, put, let's cover that up now, because that was just to access this. So the next thing we would like to do is to get these materials out of this tank. Because nitrogen, as you can see, will fill it very quickly. Um, and argon will take a long time. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to my back like this and in here I'm going to take one of different output types bronze is one of my favorites copper is another favorite and gold would use gold in fact I probably need two of some of these as I tap it no I don't I only need one so we'll just attach these to here like this because as you as, I, as we already know you can have um three per block like this I'm pressing shift to make sure i don't open up the interface like that and then we can connect these into here well so let's just connect them all up i've got to be a little bit careful i hope for the i might have to prime them it's going to be difficult to prime them to start with um so what we then need is some tanks and I don't have very many tanks with me. I mean, I've got one tank. I'll make some more. And the first one we'll do is is um, nitrogen. So let's just put this one on this on this face here, like this. And I'm bound to be able to get take a bucket of nitrogen out of here. Right, click it with the bucket. Oh, I can yes. So nitrogen. We got oxygen and nitrogen. So we'll take a bucket of nitrogen and then we can prime this pipe here. Put the bucket of nitrogen in here and then right click this into here so we know that it's the only thing that's going to go into this tank is that way. Then we can connect it up. And then we can push this out and that fills up this tank immediately. <laughs> so the next one we can do is oxygen. And if we don't need too much nitrogen, we'll do this setup here. 
Now this is what I've done before. So this one here is the electrolyzer, try again. And the electrolyzer is taking in water and producing hydrogen chloride. It's also producing oxygen. Ah, that's possibly the problem. Well, let's go and get to book. No, I can't do that. I have to unlock it and then select the recipes. So let's just select the recipes for this. The one we want would like would be water, which is this one. That didn't select for some reason or other. Probably because I've still got these locked up. Let's just unlock. Oh, yeah, there we go. So now we've got oxygen. And then we can lock this into place and this one into place like that. So they're now locked in here. So now it's going to start producing um, hydrogen again because this is out of hydrogen and it's actually out of chlorine as well. But th that doesn't matter too much. And what's happening here is this oxygen will go either into this advanced tank or into this automated trash can. So again, what we'll do is we'll set up the priority here being 10. And in the, in the trash can, I've set it up to minus 10. So, so it, the oxygen will come into here first. So as soon as the bucket of oxygen is being produced, it'll come into here and fill this one up. In fact, it should have done that by now. It's a bit on the slow side. But it looks like it's going to work. So this is empty and these are empty. So it's got 17 in the moment. Let's have a look here. That should go up to 18 as soon as it finishes. If it doesn't, then it's not working right. <laughs> doesn't look like it is working correctly. Well, never mind. We can test. We can test that. It might be coming into here. I wonder. Did I do that wrong? Let's have a look. Let's double check this. What it says. Perhaps with the highest priority first. So the highest priority, I guess, is higher than this one. Okay. And this. Maybe that's not working. The easiest way to find out is to put another tank here. We can do that. Now, I'll have to go and make some more tanks and I'll be back in a second. So, right, I'm back. Let's see what actually is happening here. Let's remove that and put this tank down here and then connect it in. And as it produces oxygen, is it still producing oxygen? It might not do now. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. So we should get one of these two tanks full. This one at the moment has got a priority of zero because I broke it. This one's got a priority of 10, which is higher. Um, but it's put most of the fluid into here and not into here. Ah, that's um, not very good, is it? Let's set the priority of this one down to minus 10. By clicking the minus minus, we'll change it to an output so it pushes everything out of there. As it, as you can see, so nothing's coming in again. Let's just change this to an input now. I'm not sure whether it's going to split it up equally. Let's have a look in this one. It's got one more it can do because then 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 the hydrogen will be full. Hopefully, it's actually put some more oxygen here, 830. So it must be putting most of it into here. I'm not sure I fully understand that. 1.6, and this is so it's putting less into here. That's not correct. I'm not sure <laughs> why that's what we have to do. I'll play with that between episodes because I don't want to spend too much time on it. Here I've set up this, and I'm still can't fi fill this pipe up because this still doesn't have one bucket of it's worth of argon, but it's filled up with the other materials. And liquid air I hasn't got any liquid air yet. Um, oh yes, because I turned it off. I turned it off because um, I wanted to be able to do the pipe work and I couldn't do the pipe work. So there we have that one. So I'll have to investigate what's going on with those priorities because I'm pretty sure the priorities should work. Maybe it's the opposite way around as documented, but I'll test that in my own time. So here this is working away. This is a filled up all these tanks of nitrogen got plenty of nitrogen we've got a reasonable amount of oxygen now whether i'm going to just put a dump throw away the nitrogen or i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure let's just have a look at the uses of nitrogen again it really is only for making industrial tnt so i could throw it away i think let's just break this one and then put into that instead of putting that let's put down a automated trash can here like this 
and throw it away. Because it's really the argon is what we want at the moment anyway. We can do the same for the oxygen here because we've got plenty of it. So let's do that as well. And let's put throw down throw away the oxygen with, no, with another trash can. In fact, I probably can throw them both way into the same trash can, can't I? Let's just do that. Yeah, I can look. So that's then just producing argon and the rest of the chemicals are just getting disposed of. So when we've got one, enough argon in there, we'll, I'll remove this one. And I've got an empty tank here, steel tank, so we can put one down. We should be able to just connect it up once everything is emptied out. In fact, let's have a look. Might be able to do that now. 606, those two are empty, so it should, if I turn this one on now, get argon into it. Indeed, I have, good. So let's put that like that, and then change that to that. Put, so there we are, argon at last. <laughs> with the industrial um, pressurizer. Uh, what we can also do with this is to change the inputs. We can change any of these recipes, oops, try without a wrench. God, which one does it allow me to look at? So you can view any of these here. So we can make high pressure heavy water will make heavy water. High pressure steam will make heavy water, sorry. Heavy, high pressure heavy water steam will produce heavy water steam. High pressure steam will produce steam and high pressure water will produce water. That's just one page. Then, then the, opposite, the opposite way around. So you take steam and get high pressure steam, which is basically the ones we want. Or maybe high pressure water. I'm not sure. But as you can see, it's eight to one. So you get eight. Eight water will produce one steam. Well, that's it for this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. Anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.